Our New Testament scripture reading today comes from Mark chapter 7. We'll be reading verses, uh, verse 1 to verse 13. Now when the Pharisees gathered to him with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands properly holding to the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. And he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother. And whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, if a man tells his father or his mother, whatever you would have gained from me is Corban, that is given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down. And many such things you do. There's a great danger, uh, and always has been, for the people of God of taking our traditions, which can be perfectly good things, lawful things, right things even, but allowing them to usurp the place of God's commandments. Taking man-made ideas and allowing them to supersede the actual words and commandments of God. Jesus calls this out over and over in his ministry, as did pretty much every one of God's prophets throughout Scripture. And Jesus tells the Pharisees here that you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. You have a fine way of doing this. This started because, as we read, the disciples weren't... uh, taking part in a kind of ritual washing that was done. It wasn't just, you know, washing your hands so that you could cleanse them of bacteria before you ate or something like that. This was actually just a a traditional kind of of cleansing or washing ritual that they would take part in. Uh, And it says that they did this for, you know, other reasons as well. There are other ways that that they would do this. And these were things handed down from the elders. And Jesus doesn't say it's wrong for them to do that. Instead, he points out their hypocrisy. He, he uses this as an opportunity to point out the problem that they were aiding people in dishonoring their parents. Right? To honor father and mother. This is one of the most central commands in Scripture. One of the ten. The first in the second table of the law. Repeated often. They had traditions and rituals, but they... They didn't help people obey that command, the direct command of God. Moses said, honor your father and mother. But they say, if a man tells his father or his mother, whatever you would have gained from me is Corban that is given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down. Corbin, it, it kind of translates it there, right? Whatever is, is given to God. It's, it's a word for gift, but specifically it was used of, of some kind of gift that was set apart or consecrated for service in the temple or, or by the, the priesthood. What the Pharisees were doing is that they were saying that uh, if anybody had money set aside that they would use for the care of their elderly parents. Remember, this is a time you don't have social safety nets. You don't have social security. You don't have anything like that. Um, All you have is your family. And your family is to take care of you. 
that's central to what it means to honor father and mother. But people could take that money they had set aside, and if they gave it to the work of the temple in some way, or set it aside and, and told the Pharisees that this is Corbin, we're giving it to you, and later they realized they needed it for the care of their parents, the Pharisees would hold them to their word. No, you have to give it to the temple. You have to give it to us, in other words. Now, if you devoted all of your wealth to the church, right, you took it all, you put it in some kind of a fund, and it just all went to missions, it all went to, to evangelism, it all went to the work of maintaining the church, you might think that you're doing something that is very right. You might think that this is one of the best things I could do. If we saw somebody doing that, we might think, what an incredible Christian, right? They must really love God. They must really love the church. But if someone was doing that, all the while neglecting to care for their aging parents, God doesn't want that money. He doesn't want that. God doesn't want your money. He wants your heart. He wants obedience to that which he said. Now, of course, giving is a good thing. It's something that we are actually required to do to a certain extent. But he has told you, O oh man, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Of course those things are good. Of course giving is good. Of course supporting missions and, and the work of the church is good. I appreciate that you do that because it's how I provide for my family. It's a good thing. But if it's done while neglecting the weightier matters of the law, the direct commandments of God, if it takes place, takes the place of the commandments of God, it's not actually a good thing. Paul tells us that one who doesn't care for the members of his own household are worse than unbelievers. And many such things you do, Christ says. Right? This is just one example. Right? He, he brings up one particular example, but there are many others throughout the gospel spoken of. It's one example, but uh, a true faith, in a sense, is very simple. Uh, true obedience is, in a sense, very simple. It's very straightforward, right? God has given us what he requires of us. He's shown us what he requires of us. He gave ten commandments, right? That, that he wrote on tablets of stone with his own finger. And in a sense, that's Jesus' challenge. To obey those commands. To obey the direct, the, the obvious things without neglecting them. True obedience in that way is very straightforward. But that's in some way what makes it more difficult. It's more challenging in a sense because it deals with those who are right in front of you, who you actually have a responsibility to, who, who you can, can see, who are, are directly, in a sense, uh, directly in front of you, that you're accountable to. It's easier sometimes to give or to help those who are far away, uh, th those who uh, are outside of your immediate day-to-day -day life. But what does God require? Love God, love neighbor. Who's your neighbor? Well, in a sense, everybody could be your neighbor, but starting with those who are closest to you. Honor father and mother. We'll keep talking about this in the sermon a bit. Old Testament reading comes from Exodus 20. We'll be reading verse 12. Hear the word of the Lord. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Let me read it again. Honor your father and mother that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. This is God's holy and inspired word for us this morning. So we've been in the Ten Commandments. Uh, we've now been in the Fifth Commandment already for a week. And last week we looked particularly at uh, the question of why. Why should we honor father and mother? We looked at the promise that's given here. And now we want to 
push a little bit deeper into the question more of how. What does it mean? We can use the word honor, uh, but what does, that, what does that really look like? What does that entail? Let me say once again, uh, before we get into it, that this command is not exclusively focused on the home. That's most primarily what it's about, right? That's the, the center of what it's about. It starts there, uh, but the home is a microcosm of the world. Now, even to say that is kind of repeating myself, because microcosm means small cosmos, right? small world. The home is a, is a small world, which in a sense contains the rest. You learn how to live in the home, how you are to live in the rest of God's world. It informs you how to live in every sphere of life. And when God commands you to honor your father and mother, uh, it, it applies outside. It applies to political fathers in the government. It applies to your ancestors, those who are living or past. It applies to spiritual fathers, especially elders in the church. It applies to employers who you have a certain responsibility to. So this command teaches you how to act toward anyone who is in authority. To remind us once again of these, this distinction made in the Westminster Confession of superiors and inferiors. And it also talks about equals, but I think equals to me is something that we more naturally understand how to act toward each other as equals. Uh, but this relationship between superiors and inferiors in your relations to others, how do you, how do you act in that? Right? An inferior, which is where we're going to be focusing today, and, and all of you are in the place of an inferior in some relationship that you have. Right? Whether because of age, whether because of employment, whether because uh, of your place in your home. Right? There's, there are different ways that you can have the, the social relationship of being an inferior. And this teaches you how to then act as an inferior toward those who have some authority over you. Those who have some kind of place of authority over you. God has placed you in particular roles within the natural hierarchy of life. And he calls you then to give honor to those in authority over you. Now I'm going to uh, walk through this. And what we're going to do is just try to you know, kind of open up this idea of honor. And look at, okay, what does that really mean and look like? And the categories I'm going to be using are not just new to me. I maybe tweaked them a little bit or changed how they sound. But really, I'm just, just using the categories that the Westminster Larger Catechism uses to describe what exactly honor is. So as we open that up and look into it more deeply, how to honor your father and mother, number one is you are to show them reverence in your behavior and have a reverent attitude toward them in your heart. Reverence is a, is a deeply held respect. To have a deeply held respect for those in authority over you. you know, or even admiration, you could say. In other words, you should, you should respect those in authority over you. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. When you respect someone, what do you do? What, how do you show respect? Well, you listen to them. Right? You take what they say, uh, not in a casual way, as if it doesn't matter, but you take what they say with some weight. When you're a very young child, that means doing what your parents tell you to do. And that may change as you get older, but it at least begins that way. As Thomas Watson says, a child should be a parent's echo. When the father speaks, the child should echo back obedience. And it's through that process of obeying the commands of someone in authority over you that you then grow. It's, it's the normative way that you grow and actually that you grow into authority yourself as God builds you and crafts you into the kind of person that can handle authority. It's not abnormal for someone, whether it be a you know, young man in the home or someone just in the workforce, or wherever it might be, to really uh, desire to be in a place of authority, to, to be the one who is in the place of a superior, and to go about trying to get there by, uh, in some way, disrespecting those in authority. 
right? By, by mocking those in authority or by not listening, by saying no, by being, by being disrespectful. But that's not the way that God has designed the world. It, it just simply won't work. To honor father and mother means to show them respect. And it's not enough to simply behave with, with that kind of reverence. Uh, but God wants your heart, right? He doesn't just want your, your outward obedience. He wants your heart. We can all think of times, whether you've seen it in your own children or when you were a child, you can maybe remember an experience where uh, you were told to do something. Let's just say you were told to clean your room or go pick up your room. And you did it, but you weren't really obeying in spirit, right? Because you were mad the whole time, right? You showed it on your face that you didn't want to do this. You, in some way, fought back. In whatever little way you thought you could, you just, you push against it, right? We, we've all done that in one way or another. And even though you've now probably grown up, you might still have that kind of attitude when someone in authority over you asks you to do something. You treat those in authority over you uh, with the respect they're due. That's what it means to honor. To honor the, the place that God has put them, the office that God has given them. Next, to honor someone would also mean to uh, not sin against them or, or to seek to not sin against them. And that seems in some ways obvious maybe. Uh, and, and I don't mean to say it very casually, like, yeah, just don't sin against them. Isn't that easy? <laughs> you know, shouldn't you just naturally not do that? Uh, no, it, it's hard. It's, it's difficult. Uh, this is the nature of all of these different aspects of honor, by the way, is they are disciplines. This is not something that is necessarily very easy. It's not something that maybe comes uh, extremely naturally to you. Uh, they're disciplines. They take work. It's difficult to get to the point where you're truly obeying. But this is what God has commanded. And by his grace, with his help, you can seek to truly get to the place where you're honoring those in authority over you. So don't sin against your father and mother. That, that would help you to honor them. What are the sins that naturally come from us when we're in the place of an inferior, right? When there's somebody in authority over us, what are the sins that are most common of us toward them? Maybe envy, right? Envying their position. And envy, this is not the, you know, just the, nat the natural good desire that you may have to grow to the point where you're in authority. Right? A child can desire to be a father or mother someday. That's a perfectly fine desire. We're told by Paul that it's good if a man desires to enter into the office of an overseer. That's a good thing. It's a right thing. But that's not envy. Envy maybe starts from that good desire. Oh, but it's twisted. Right? You want to take it from them. You, you want to have it in a way that they don't. You want to wield it against them. You wish them harm in some way. So envy, envy, that's very typical. Contempt, holding someone in contempt who's in authority over you, right? Don't be contemptuous toward them, thinking little of them, right? Not holding them in high esteem or high regard. What about uh, just the, the rebellious nature of our heart? Right, a kind of stubborn rebellion against those in authority. Right, you're told, told to do something and you just, you kind of fight against it. We curse them. Right, those, those who hold authority over us, how common is that? That we would, would curse them or mock them, whether to their face or more likely behind their back. Right, if you were around a child that was you know, just incessantly mocking their parents when they weren't around, you would find that really wrong and distasteful probably. And yet, a lot of us still do that, don't we, uh, to those in authority over us. Bosses that we have, political leaders, pastors. You don't do it for pastors, though, I know. 
right? We also sometimes live in scandalous ways that bring shame on those in authority over us. This is another way that we sin, right? So children in scripture are spoken primarily of as a blessing, as a good thing, right? Children are a reward. They're a blessing from God. They're a heritage from the Lord. But that's not the only way children are spoken of because children can also be a curse. Okay, children are not an unmitigated blessing. They're really a compounder, right? If God blesses you with a child, it compounds the blessing that he would already give you. But children can also be a curse. If they grow up and they live in a scandalous way, they reject the faith, they they live in a way that brings shame to you, that will devastate you. It will destroy you, right? It will compound grief. It will compound shame that otherwise might not have been there. So, so scripture also speaks of children as a curse. You can, you as somebody who is below another in authority, you're not just an unmitigated blessing to them, right? You, you are to be a blessing to them, but it doesn't just happen. If you are to live in some scandalous way that brings shame on them, this is, this is wrong. It's dishonorable to do so. So when God says, honor father and mother, this is part of what he's talking about. This is part of what he means. Next, right, not, we'll kind of move on from there. There's so much more that could be said, right? There's no doubt many other ways that we sin against those in authority, but we only have so much time. But next, to honor those in authority over you, you should give thanks for them. Be thankful for them and look for ways to be thankful for them. Right? Be thankful for the ways that they have helped you, that they've instructed you, that they've taught you, that they've made you what you are today. Now, this can be really hard, especially if you grew up in a dysfunctional home or you didn't have a good father or mother. Maybe you don't have a good relationship with them. That can make this really hard. But even in that case, there's probably something that you could give thanks for, something that they've done in a way, by God's common grace that was of benefit, right? You can see the hand of God even there sometimes, good memories, even if they're few. And that's helpful to recognize that that even where things were bad, because God is ultimately the one at work in this world, you can still find things to be thankful for. You can be thankful to God. You can give thanks to God for what you have been given even if it's less than what you see others have been given. And it's right and honorable if you express that to those in authority over you as well, right? That you don't just think that, which would be great. That's a good place to start, right? If you don't think that there's anything to be thankful for, the start, starting place is to, to try to learn, what can I be thankful for? But it's good to express that, right? Express to your parents your thankfulness for them. Express to those in authority over you how much you've been blessed by God through them. Closely tied to this, you can pray for them. You can pray for them. Maybe, maybe you have a, a, not a you know, super close relationship to somebody in authority over you. You don't have to have a good relationship to pray for them. Those in positions of authority are often uh, bearing burdens that you don't know. Right? They're often sheltering you from uh, having to deal with burdens. It's part of being a leader, right? It's part of having authority, taking on responsibility in the different spheres of life. Uh, but you think about this. When you're a kid, you, you don't think, wow, I wonder if my parents are, you know, really worried about finances this month. You just generally don't think about that, right? Uh, man, I wonder if they're really struggling with how to figure out how, the best way to educate me. <laughs> you know, generally speaking, you're just... You're just going along with life. And then you get to a point of maturity where you start to see the difficulty. Or you look back and you realize, oh, I bet this was really hard for my mom and dad. And this is true in every area of life. And maybe you're not in the place where you can bear any of those burdens. You can't help, but you can pray for them. If you're called to pray for those who persecute you, how much more should you pray for those who have done you so much good? How much more for those that you're meant to honor? Ask God to strengthen them, 
to bless them. Pray that God would make you a good son or daughter, that you would not be a curse to your parents' name, that you would be a, a blessing to them from the Lord. Pray for the elders of the church, for wisdom and fidelity. Pray for your political leaders. Right? What if we just decided, as a general rule, I'm going to spend twice as much time praying for those in political authority over me uh, than, rather than complaining about them. Right? I'm just going to try to double my time uh, from when I complain to prayer. We'd be praying a lot. That'd be a lot of prayer. And that would be a way to honor them. Another way that you honor father and mother is by imitating them in Christ. Right? To follow after them as they follow Christ. It's true that in every generation, there will probably be things that you look back on and you think, I would like to do things different, right? I would like to change some things. There are things that, you know, maybe I didn't really love about how my parents did things. And that's just part of the difficulty of growing up and differentiating and, and taking on responsibility yourself, right? Maybe you see some sins or failures and you don't want to follow in those ways. And that's a fine thing. That's a good thing. But it's much easier to see the bad things sometimes than to see what's really good, the good things, the blessings, the ways that God has worked through those in authority over you. And so what you want to do is, is look for those things. Where could I imitate? Right? Where, where could I follow after? What Christ-like character do I see in my mom and dad and that I can imitate in following them? Right? Paul says to follow me as I follow Christ. Now, Paul was not, you know, the perfect man. He did many wrong things, and yet he can say that. Follow me as I follow Christ. And likewise, that's what we should do as we look to those in authority over us. As they follow Christ, so should we. Right? Look for those things that are good or honorable and try to learn them. Imitate them. To honor father and mother also means to uh, submit to their correction, right? God has placed authorities over you as a way to discipline you, to help you grow, to correct you. And if you push back and fight against that discipline, it doesn't make it better, right? It doesn't, it doesn't help. All it does is remove sometimes the opportunity for growth, or at least the the growth that could come with less difficulty. And maybe it adds more guilt upon you for disobeying, for rejecting authority. Now remember when you were young, and maybe this hits a little too close to home for some who are still children, but remember times when, uh, you know, maybe you hit your sibling or you badmouthed your mom or something like that, and then you knew dad's coming home. He's going to spank me. Right? You knew, okay, I'm going to be in trouble. And maybe you try to run away. Okay, it doesn't work. Right? It, didn't, it didn't stop anything. Maybe you try to fight back. Right? You kick and scream and, and you fight. But that doesn't, that doesn't change the, the discipline that comes. It just adds friction. It just makes it worse. And that's a lesson that we should learn in childhood. That we're supposed to learn in childhood. But sometimes we haven't. Right? Sometimes we don't learn that when we should, but we can learn it today. We can learn it now that we should submit to the correction of those in authority over us. Now, sometimes it's going to happen that that correction is not right. You know, sometimes it's going to be true that we disagree with those in authority over us and what they're telling us, right? what, what they're, they're trying to, to correct in us. We may disagree, and, and that does make, it makes it difficult. It does make it difficult sometimes to submit to that correction. And maybe there will be times that you're convinced that you can't submit to it because of the word of God. But most of the time, it's just a, a general disagreement. And still, to be, to be honoring in our disposition, right, as inferiors, our disposition should be to trust the correction that's coming to us ultimately from God through those in authority over us. Even if we think it's not right, you can look for ways that it may be true. Right? This is true of any criticism, by the way. This is 
maybe I shouldn't even say this. Maybe this is, you know, some kind of holy advice. This isn't wor the word of God. So take this or leave it. But you can do this with any criticism. Right? You, can, you can receive any criticism and just say, okay, what's true and what's not true in this? You don't have to be defensive when somebody criticizes you or, or gives you something to work on, even if it's done in a bad spirit. Right? So a lot of times when people criticize you, it'll be done in a bad, in a bad spirit. But you can just listen and say, okay, well, well, I mean, what could I hear from this? How could I improve from this? Okay, that's, you know, maybe a little bit of an aside, but that's at least analogous to how you honor someone in authority over you when you're being corrected in a way that you don't fully agree with. You can still submit ultimately to that authority. And that takes extraordinary humility. It really does. It's very hard. But that is, that's where this honor really comes into play. In a way, we could say it's easy to honor those in authority over us when we just think they're doing great and, and we, we think that everything they do, we just totally agree with. It's really those times where we don't know that we agree, where this comes into play most. You should also, in order to honor those in authority, faithfully defend and care for them in their authority. It's really easy to be a, a grumbler. It's easy to complain. But if you want to honor those in authority over you, you want to be the kind of person that uh, stands up for them, right? That defends them, that actively cares for them. You want to be the one that speaks highly of them when others are belittling or mocking them behind their back. You want to care for your parents, even when others don't think that you should. That the kind of employee that when others are bickering about the boss, right, you stand up for them, or you at least stand up for their authority, their office, right, the place that they hold. You don't want to be the person that's always talking bad about the church or the decision of, of the elders. Right? In any sphere, the, the kind of person that's always attacking, always belittling, always mocking, the person who's disloyal in, in spirit, right, that's not the person that God is going to give influence to. It's not the person that God is going to uh, give more responsibility to. They, they might actually have some ability to change things that they see and want to change. You want to be the person that's ultimately loyal to those in authority. And to honor your father and mother also means to bear with them. The Westminster Larger Catechism adds uh, to cover their infirmities with love. Okay, whether it be actual sins that they commit or simply, you know, what we would call idiosyncrasies, right? Things that you maybe find annoying, little, you know, habits or quirks that you just don't like. With any of these things, you can bear with them. You can bear with those over you that you might honor them. And that's the right word for it, to bear it. Right? It's a burden. It's difficult. But you can put up with it. You can bear it. You can cover it over with love. And so when you see the sins and failures, the weaknesses of those over you, right, you can be patient with them. Right? Not, I mean, we're not talking about if someone's committing a crime. You don't put up with that, right? You, there, there are all kinds of ways in God's world that he has created different authority structures so that people can be held accountable for what they do, right? There, there's all different authorities. This is, you know, why a politician could, you know, hold some authority in the civil realm, but they can still be disciplined within the church. They're still accountable to the church, right? Elders in the church are accountable to you know, a presbytery above them, but also to the civil authorities if they were to commit a crime, right? Your parents are accountable to the elders of the church as well as to civil authorities, right? So whenever we're talking about, you know, being in the place of, of an inferior under an authority, it doesn't mean that person is God. It doesn't mean that they have all authority. It just means that they have a particular authority over you and you're to honor them in that realm, and so when it comes to what we might call, you know, day-to-day -day sins, right, the, the things that are, you know, less heinous, these aren't, these aren't the kinds of sins that would stop everything. This is, this is the day-to-day, -day, you know, they're short with you. 
right? They speak with you in a way they really shouldn't. They're disrespectful toward you. Whatever it might be, right? These things, we can bear up under them. Their failures and mistakes, their weaknesses, the annoyances, the little annoyances that come in, we can bear with them. And more than that, we, we should be willing to forgive them. Right? Forgive them when they have sinned against us. The command of the Lord to forgive as we've been forgiven doesn't go away when power dynamics enter in or, or when somebody has authority over you. You have to forgive. You're commanded to. Commanded to forgive even those in authority. One of the reasons you should bear with uh, fathers and mothers, even as they sin, even as they uh, do these things that you, you don't like, is in large part because you will be them. I'm sure you've all had the experience. As you grow older, you recognize that you are like your parents. Even in things that you don't like. Even in the things that you said, I will never do that. You become like them. It's just the natural way of the world. And if you, this is, this is simply restating when Jesus says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. This is simply restating it. But if, if you're unwilling to forgive, to honor, to care for, to bless those in authority over you when they sin, you can't expect those below you, those who you then have authority over someday to do that to you. Right? Treat them as you would like to be treated. There's so much more that could be said on this note. There always is. Uh, there, there's more that we could say. But, but let's end with this. Ultimately, you are honoring your father and mother because that is how you honor God. If you want to honor God, that is how you do it. You honor him by, by showing honor to him in the station of life that you're in, not in some idealized, abstract way, but in the real-life circumstances that he has put you. You take up your place in that cosmic dance. To honor him requires, then, that you show honor to those who he has placed above you in authority. Think of the Lord Jesus. Think of his humility. If anybody had an opportunity to you know, speak against his parents or complain against his parents, it would have been him, right? The sinless son of God, the one who upheld everything by the word of his power, even in his incarnation. And yet, he only showed honor. He only showed reverence. He only showed respect. So all of these different aspects of honor, all all of these things that, you know, we would say is what honor means, what it means to honor. Right? These are things that you can do through Christ who gives you strength. This is the, the path that he has set out before you in order to follow him. In any station of life that he has placed you and you are called to honor those in authority so that, and, and by doing so, you will be honoring God. So I'll close with this. This is another quote from Thomas Watson. He says this, Let your lives be living commentaries upon this command. Let your lives express what it is that it means to honor father and mother. Let's pray. Lord God, give us the mind of Christ. Humble us and help us to see the ways that we might give honor where it's due that we've not been. Forgive us where we need to be forgiven in this matter. And Lord Jesus, by your spirit, please impart to us a a spirit of reverence and respect for those whom you are working through in authority over us. We pray this in your name. Amen.